would sell popcorn. Sounds like it does. No. Would you check it, Suzanne? Do you mind? I can't see it. Sorry. I can still see you. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still going? Okay. Move. A, can you move a little bit? Yep, it's mm -hmm. still going. It, is it, is it, are there numbers coming up? Yep. Okay, good. It made a beat. Yeah, I know. There's not supposed to be a red light or anything, is there? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, but the There's numbers the, the numbers are progressing. Okay. Yeah. So sorry about that. Um, I am starting to record different presentations that I'm doing and um, putting them on um, YouTube, getting into the you know tech, technological world, so folks will have access to this after today too. So a um, couple of checks. One. Did everybody get a handout? Yes. Did everybody get one of these cheat sheets too? So there are some that haven't yet. Um, they're not necessary for today's presentation, but they'll be really helpful for later. And I'm actually going to ask you to slide down a little bit. There we go. So I'm Dr. Susan Thompson. I know some of you have come to presentations um, I've done before. Thank you for coming back. Uh, today, I want to talk about something that I just love to talk about. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of history and background. My intention is to give you as many um, practice runs at using tapping as possible. How does that sound to you all? Good? So, what I'd like to do is, um, even before I start with outline of the presentation, I'd like to just show you the points, and I'd like you to tap along with me. You'll get more out of this presentation if you participate. Um, it's also up to you. I'll um, review the, the points as we go along. But to start out with, Let's just do a little bit of tapping. How does that sound? The first point is called the karate chop. And it's that fleshy part on the outside of your palm. So if you have your palm down and your thumb towards you, it's right on the outside. So we're going to tap on that. That's called the setup. This is the karate chop where you're going to um, say a setup statement. And usually the setup statement is a statement of an issue. I'm a little nervous this morning, so I'm going to um, use that, if that's okay with you all. I, I think the world could use a little bit less anxiety. <laughs> I won't contribute to it. <laughs> so the setup statement is a statement of an issue. And the more information you can include in it, as thoughts, as well as feelings, as well as body sensations, the better. And it's followed by an affirmation. So this morning, right now, um, I'm going to say, even though I'm nervous about this presentation, and I can feel it in my gut, I love and accept myself. So you can say it after me, or um, it's up to you. So um, we usually say this up two or three times. So even though I'm nervous about this presentation, I love and accept myself. Even though I'm nervous about this presentation, you can just say, even though I'm nervous. And you might not be. It'll take care of some of the things. I love and accept myself. And we'll do it one more time for good measure. Even though I'm a little nervous this morning, I love and accept myself. So, top of the head, I'm going to start at the top of the head. It's right in the center, about where the soft spot was. And I'm going to use a reminder statement now, which is this nervousness. So I'm going to tap five to seven times at each point. This nervousness. Next point is the eyebrow point. So it's right at the edge of the eyebrow, the bridge of the nose. This nervousness. This nervousness. The next one is at the side of the eye on the bone. This nervousness. This one is under the eye on the bone, this nervousness. The 
next one's under the nose is nervousness. Above the chin is nervousness. This one is called the collarbone. And <clears throat> you follow your collarbone just under it. There's a little indentation we're gonna, if you get close, that's okay. This nervousness. nervousness. Under the arm, which is about four inches below the armpit, this nervousness. nervousness. You'll see me do it a little bit different in a minute. And I always stop and start at the top of the head that's not required, this nervousness. I could do a little bit more, but that's okay right now. I'm gonna take a deep breath. And I'm just gonna notice what's happening in my body mind. How y'all doing? Okay. I'm doing a little bit better. That's great. So you all have handouts that have a lot of information on them. Some of you probably know that I can't stand those PowerPoint handouts and like more information. So this one is a pretty hefty handout that you've got. Um, and you've got cheat sheets too. So all of that information is on uh, your handout as well as the cheat sheet. Um, let's see. So I wanted to uh, pause for a second. One of the things that I do is I provide LCC supervision. And I want you to know that um, I'm, I'm gonna need to back up. So some of you know that I, um, a couple years ago, started a practice called Military Integrative Therapies. Um, three of us were very excited about getting the practice going. And about six months ago, we decided, each of us decided kind of independently, I think I wanna go in another direction. Anybody ever have that happen before? I was kind of nervous about saying that to y'all. Um, <laughs> so I started my own practice again. I've been in practice since about 2001. And my new practice, I'm so excited about this one, is um, Integrative Counseling and Wellness. So it really reflects where I am on um, a professional and personal level too. So I have some residents that are working with me. And I have a new one coming on board, Alice Connor. Alice is here. I wanted her to say a couple words because um, Alice is a musician and she's becoming a music therapist. Isn't that cool? We don't have any of those. So do you want to say a couple words? Hi, I'm Alice Connor. that I want to make sure that you have. Um, it looks like somebody might have snagged mine off my table. I saw that. <laughs> One is um, the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. There's a brochure on that. I'll talk about that um, towards the end. 
Um, and then there's a pizza, that a brochure that's also on the table from Emily Blythus, who's getting started with some anger management kinds of programs. Okay, so I'm gonna um, tell you a little bit more about my background um, related to this kind of work, because um, that's a whole other path. Um, I also want to give you a little bit of background and history on energy psychology, which is the big umbrella for this kind of work. Um, and then we'll do a little bit that um, links CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and EFT, emotional freedom techniques, which is the primary technique that I'm going to be using today, which is actually what we've done so already so far. Um, some research, I'm going to do as many demonstrations as possible. So we'll do some group, and then we'll, um, I'll ask for a volunteer or two, um, and then we'll do some other group stuff. How does that sound? Practice, 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 right? So um, I didn't realize until I started putting together a presentation like this how long I've been interested in this kind of thing. I grew up in a military family, um, and what that means is that we lived by a lot of structure. My, my dad retired as a full colonel in the army, um, and um, there was not a lot of straying outside the lines in my family. However, when I was in um, college, I had an opportunity to, um, to work at the American Embassy in Brussels, because my family was living in Brussels. And I got interested somehow in acupuncture. I must have found a book in a library or something. And in my commute from where my parents lived into the city of Brussels to where the um, embassy was, I was reading on acupuncture. I just thought it was really interesting. Um, I put that aside. Um, my first job out of my master's program was at Washington University in St. Louis. And I took Tai Chi at the local campus. Why? Who's familiar with Tai Chi? It's really wonderful. Um, I think I have a little ADHD. I don't think I would need any kind of criteria or diagnosis, but I love action and movement. And Tai Chi is essentially meditation with physical movement. And that really works for, for me. Um, I moved, so I'm going to fast forward. I worked at Washington University in St. Louis. Then I worked at College of William Mary. Then I went back to school to get my doctorate. and. Um, fast forward to um, moving here in 1996, um, I joined a, a, a group related to the Association for Research and Enlightenment, the ARE, um, and through that actually I had a friend who was becoming a Reiki master. How many of you are familiar with Reiki? Um, it's an energy healing modality, an ancient energy healing modality. And my friend was becoming trained as a Reiki master. And she stumbled across in about 2000, 2001, video recordings. This is how, remember, remember VHS? <laughs> Some of you may or may not, but VHS. She had VHS recordings of Gary Craig, who's the founder of EFT, um, week-long uh, trainings on EFT. And I was just getting started in private practice. So uh, because I had more time than I had clients, I decided every day I would watch a video and I tapped along. So that summer, I started private practice in January and February of 2001. And that summer, I was going through a really difficult experience, also called a separation toward a divorce. And um, at the end of the summer, I realized that it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, because I've been, I've been tapping. Not on all that stuff. I was just tapping along with the recordings. And I realized it wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. I was trying to teach other people, because I teach, I learn best by teaching other people. Somebody said, oh, I have this headache. You want to try this thing called it? <laughs> or, you know, I'm really struggling with, oh, you want to try this thing called EFT? I don't know if it'll work. Um, 
So I was tapping along with folks, and I still tap along with clients. So I'm, um, even now, I'm introduced, as I introduce it with clients, I'm tapping along with folks. And I'll, I'll say this now because I'll forget later. Um, you know that thing that's called counter-transference? <laughs> um, and you know how you pick up on other people's energy? Like you spend a day with depressed people. I don't know about you, but my, my, my journey home is sometimes tear-filled and um, just exhausting. It's not that way now um, because I'm tapping with people and I'm clearing whatever it is that's triggering related to whatever it is that's going on with them. I kind of like that. Um, <clears throat> so, I, um, I'll fast forward a little bit more. I joined the ODU faculty in about 2005, and um, another faculty member who has since left found out that I was doing this kind of energy stuff. And I will never, this is one of those memorable moments so I'm sitting in my office, my windowless office, next to the bathroom, where I couldn't get any cell phone reception. <laughs> and this other faculty member walks in and closes the door, and she says, I hear you're one of us. <laughs> I looked at her, and I really didn't know what she was talking about. And it turns out that one of us meant um, people who really understand or at least have a, a toehold into this thing called energy. She also was a Reiki master. Um, and together, we put, toge we, we put together a, a class on complementary and alternative therapies. And that was kind of the beginning of the end, or the end of the beginning, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because from there, um, I found out about the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology, and that was an important thing for me because I'd go to conferences and I'd be, I felt like an outsider at most of the conferences that I went to. I walked into this conference and I'm like, oh, I found my people. <laughs> you know how important it is to find your people? <laughs> um, and I started the, uh, their certification process. Okay, I admit this, I haven't finished it. That was in 2007. Um, <clears throat> 2008, I guess it says on here. Um, the process of learning was really helpful for me. Um, in 2013, just two years ago, I helped to bring a trainer here to train folks in a level one certification in EFT, um, the clinical practice of emotional freedom techniques. And so here I've been practicing EFT um, with clients and with other people, and I've got the certification. And Gary Craig, the founder, um, will say in his presentations, you could try it on everything, and you know, the best practice is to do it every day yourself. Okay, I don't know if you figure out how many years are between <laughs> when I started learning. And this last um, December, this last December, I'm listening to CDs as I'm, um, as I'm driving up to Williamsburg to visit a friend. And um, I hit a mother load of issue. <sighs> Anybody ever done that? Right? I had tears streaming. I'm tapping along, tears streaming. And I'm thinking, it's time. It's time to tap every day. So since December 14th, um, I have been doing that very thing. Now, it's not every, every day. I've gone away, and um, I've said, yeah, I'll do it when I really get to it, but here's what's helped. I have a friend who said, I'll tap with you. So you know that being accountable to somebody else makes a big difference. I think that's why our work as therapists, as counselors, really makes a difference to people, too. People then are accountable to somebody else. So every morning at 6.15, until 6.30 or 6.45, we're tapping. Um, and there's some amazing things that have come from it. I feel lighter in all kinds of ways. So I want to encourage you, once you've really figured this thing out, to um, start integrating. If it's not this tool, then other tools on a daily um, practice. I have one up 
here for the different certifications that I've gotten. I'm now a Reiki master. Um, I've done multidimensional healing. So this is my woo-woo resume right here. <laughs> to the degree that um, I'm actually now presenting at the ARE, Edgar Casey's ARE. They're free presentations, they're once a month. Um, I'm telling you this because this is kind of, I'm outing myself on this. <laughs> um, it's their psychic fair. So I get to talk about energy to people who are starting to be open to energy. And that's what I love to do. So how many of you have heard about meridians, um, the meridian tapping, or EFT before today? Oh good, I get to preach to some of the choir. Um, how many of you are trained in TFT or EFT already? Okay, that's good. So um, how many of you have used EFT or TFT yourselves? Some of you, okay, not as many. It's kind of hard to start practicing for yourself. And how many of you then have used it with clients? Some. Okay. We'll talk about Towards the end, the ethics of, now that you've learned a tool, how do you present it to, to clients? All right, I told you my story. <clears throat> so I want to put that aside for a minute. And, and because the title of this is uh, Meridian Tapping, CBT with a Twist, let's do a real quick review of some principles of CBT. So I'm going to ask, we'll just do some brainstorming. I'm going to ask you, it's nothing's in the, I, I, nothing's in that handout on CBT. <laughs> so I figure this is our foundation. We're going to reestablish this foundation. What are principles of, of CBT that you all remember or know that you're for what you're, whatever you're using? Principles. Ready? <laughs> How do you explain CBT to clients? Pardon? Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Okay. Focusing on cognitive and behavioral work that we're um, also connecting left and right brain neurologically. What else? Now I'm just talking about CBT. Okay? So CBT helps people to um, be mindful of their thoughts and their feelings and understand how they're influencing their lives. Is that a reasonable description of CBT? <coughs> Anything you want to add to that? So we focus in CBT on folks' thoughts and beliefs, and we help people figure out other thoughts and beliefs that they could have to influence their lives in a different way. Is that also accurate? How many of you, so CBT at its best form, we have, we start um, having people dispute irrational thoughts or beliefs. How well does that work in your practice? 100%? Not really. Nothing works 100%. Is it 75% or 50%? Most of the time, 
Do you have clients who are so stuck in their thinking and their believing that they can't even go to a disputing thought? I see a lot of heads shaking, yes. Um, what I came to with CBT is that when we have this thought that people have been thinking or belief that people have had for a long time, and we start disputing it, it becomes an argument internally. Who wins an argument? <laughs> Very few people win an argument. And this is the run, the end run. I think um, EFT and energy is the end run. Um, I didn't, I've never thought about it that way before. Um, it's the, here's, I'm, I'm ahead of my slides, so I'm gonna, um, I'm going to say it and then know that I'll flip through it here in a second. So we know about with CBT2, the ABC model. How many of you use the ABC model? A is the activated event, B is the belief or thought, and C is the consequence, and then you can do the D, yes, right? On an energetic level, energy trumps thoughts, feelings, um, and beliefs and what's happening in the body, and here's how. It's all energy. It's all energy. Our bodies are energy. How do we know that? How do we know that our bodies are energy? You know? EEG, we measure our heart and the goings on with EEG, EKG. So that's on the electrical level. Our bodies are also magnetic. How do we know that? MRI. MRI. Um, there's a magnetic resonance that happens in that kind of machine. So our bodies are made of energy. Our thoughts are energy. <coughs> our feelings are energy. Our sensations are energy. And so the paradigm for EFT and energy psychology it's a different paradigm. It starts with the energetic system. The paradigm is this, that the source of all disease, disease, dysregulated feelings, dysregulated thought, all disease is a disruption of the body's energy system. That's in the handout too. So, if what we've been doing is treating people at the thought level, we're no different than psychiatrists who are treating people with meds for their symptoms. Do you sense, do you see that? So this technique is intended to help people realign energetically. So let me talk a little bit about the meridians. How many of you know about the meridians? <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to give you another framework. I said the body's made of energy, it is energy. And there are three, at least three, energetic systems in our bodies. The meridians, and I'll talk about those here in a few minutes. The chakras, or chakras, right, those are energy centers. This is not in your handout, but it gives you the, the context for this. The chakras, how many of you are familiar with chakras? More and more people are familiar with chakras. As yoga becomes more popular, big folks are, are um, becoming exposed to chakras. They're energy centers, and in the diagram, those are the bigger circles um, of the the body. And then there's the biofield or aura. The biofield is, uh, this is the picture, unfortunately, doesn't really show it. But the biofield is our energetic field. Everything has a field. And our energetic field goes out to uh, about our fingertips. It's like this big energetic bubble around us. And as we have stress, it tends to contract. 
as we um, experience more joy in our lives, it tends to expand. But it's typically out to about our fingertips. It's these energetic systems that um, have us have a sense of when somebody's looking at us from a distance behind us. Anybody ever have that experience? It's the energy when you walk into a room and two people have been fighting. You don't hear a word, but you feel the tension, right? That's energy. That's our energetic systems picking that up. So the meridians are energy pathways. This is a, an Im image of a meridian doll. I actually have it in my office because I like people to be able to see what it looks like. Um, you have to go to an acupuncture site in order to get them, but they're pretty reasonably priced. And on this doll, you'll see different lines uh, and also lots of um, Chinese characters that indicate the numbers for where the acupressure, acupuncture points are. So there are actually 14 meridians. I'm sorry about color, it's hard to, to have that pick up. There are 14 different meridians. So they're mirror image. They're most, 12 of them are mirror on each side of the, on the, of the body. And then there's another pair that's front and back, right? So um, there's a meridian that, that is um, mirrored here. This is another meridian. This is another meridian. This is another meridian. This is another meridian. So we actually have, there are six on either side, so 12 pairs that way. And then there's another pair front and back. So if this one goes from here to um, our perineum, and then it picks up on the other side of the perineum and goes under the tongue here. So it's paired in a different way. 14 different meridians. And each one of them has a name the lung meridian, the liver meridian. And here's the thing. Knowledge of these meridians is at least 5,000, possibly 10,000 or more years old. So the Chinese figured out through scientific discovery, we think we're hot stuff because we've discovered this scientific method just about 400 years ago. But you know what? The Chinese were using the scientific method 5,000, maybe 10,000 years ago or longer ago than that. So our modern medicine says, oh, by the way, we just discovered the body of faith energy. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> um, but the Chinese figured it out and started using acupuncture to stimulate points on the body that would shift the person's energy. Now, it's I'm pretty typical for um, acupuncturists to not only use the needles, but also um, herbs. Um, and I'll pick up on that here in a few minutes with a study that has been recently pretty re rediscovered. So acupuncture itself is one of the um, oldest, most commonly used medical procedures in the world. In the world. You know, we in the U.S. think that we're pretty far ahead, but we're actually a little bit behind when it comes to using complementary and alternative therapies. The World Health Organization refers to uh, to natural uh, uh, or natural medicine, or as uh, is, is the I'm not thinking of the words right now. But the World Health Organization um, refers to what we think as modern medicine is is the traditional medicine that was practiced from ages ago. And here's the interesting thing, that many, many of the herbal compounds that have been used by indigenous cultures are being co-opted by pharmaceutical companies. They're being used for the exact same thing. Um, so with acupuncture, that's the needles. So we're stimulating acupuncture the points, but with tapping. It doesn't necessarily have to be tapping itself. I have some clients who, um, either because they have some sensation issues in their fingers, um, that they just hold points. 
So please know that you don't necessarily have to tap. And you can tap pretty gently, because what you're really doing is stimulating the acupuncture point. Is there a benefit um, between acupuncture versus acupressure? So is there any sense of when to use each? That's a great question. So in order to do acupuncture, you have to have the training in it as an acupuncturist. Um, and I think, I actually have never had acupuncture. In all this time, I've never had acupuncture. I think it's the needles, honestly. <laughs> um, but there's a release. There is a release. A bio there's a biochemical release that happens too. Um, and not just biochemical, but an electromagnetic kind of um, shift that happens at the acupuncture points. They've been able to measure the acupuncture points. So, um, so typically with acupuncture, your course of treatment is a gentle, steady course of treatment for a particular issue. Um, and, and the other, so I'm trying to answer your question through, with a couple of different things. Um, one of the foundational concepts, too, with acupuncture um, is that not only is that source of all disease a disruption of the body's energy system, but the reason for your energy system being disrupted and your energy system being disrupted, even though the symptoms may be the same, may be because of a different source. Our medicine still treats the symptoms. It doesn't treat the source. And so what acupuncture would do is more, um, what it would be to assess the source. And that would be the energetics, what's happening with the body's energies, and treat that. Did that answer your question? It's starting to. Yeah. What I like about tapping EFT is that we can do it for ourselves. So it's what I like about it as a clinician teaching clients too. I'm pretty realistic, I don't know about you, but to have people come once a week or every other week or however often they come for this short amount of time, the more I can equip clients with the skills that they need when they're living their lives, the better off I think they are. And this is a really easy technique. Yeah. more cost effective once they can do it themselves. Absolutely. So I think what I'm trying to do is to teach clients to operate on their own. The best thing I can do is actually terminate with a client when they're um, in a place that they are better, rather than having them rely on me. <clears throat> Other questions? Thank you for your comments. So thought field therapy is the precursor to EFT. TFT, EFT, right? TFT, thought field therapy, was discovered, was uh, developed by Roger Callahan, a psychologist who in the 1970s also studied traditional Chinese medicine. He was interested in it. And in the late 70s, he had a client named Mary. Wouldn't you like to be uh, Mary? Because now <laughs> Mary is infamous. So he was working with Mary using some prolonged exposure therapy on her phobia of water. And they weren't getting anywhere. I think he was lucky that she kept coming back. <laughs> um, and he had this flash of insight. Anybody have flashes of, flashes of insight in session? I do. It's like, oh, oh, we can try this. Um, <clears throat> So he says to Mary, tap right here, and tell me again about what happened for you. All right, so this is one of the points. This is about anxiety. Right? Phobia is anxiety. So she, he had her tap right here and tell him the story, focusing on the issue. So one of the, the um, criticisms of EFT is, oh, you're just distracting people. Okay, that's coming from someone who doesn't understand the distraction is a really good tool. <laughs> so, I don't know how focusing on something is distracting, but oh well. <laughs> so, Mary tapped and focused. And after a very short period of time, stopped and says, It's gone. It's gone. 
Now, I don't know about you, but before I started doing this, but that never happened in sessions. Um, and it happens, I want you to know, on a regular basis with clients, with me, as I'm tapping with them. They have these amazing ahas. I had a client just a couple of days ago who um, we were tapping. She's got a lot of physiological issues, very deep depression, has a, is also doing a, a magnetic treatment. It's out of pocket, some of you've heard of it. Um, in combination with some EFT, and I think the combination is really helpful for her. Um, so she had this aha on the way over to her session. She's like, and she says it when she um, sat. She's like, I think I love myself. That's a totally new thought. And then, as we were tapping, she not only says, I know I love myself, she says, I'm worth taking care of. How cool is that? That's a totally new thought. That's transformative. From that place, people 